second session of this afternoon. Um, it is a great pleasure to uh, introduce uh, Shikari Dene. It's a particular honor uh, uh, to be uh, presenting this, uh, this session this interview with, with Jizel. Uh, Jizel is a uh, professor emerita of the Soho Nouvelle, this time well. Uh, she is uh, the author of a very few uh, major uh, groundbreaking publications in um, either in the form of monographs or uh, in the form of collective works. Uh, she has a children on other publications, colleagues on Ajit. Uh, she was at the origin of the Dikustenet uh, uh, group and the uh, journal of the same name. And as such, uh, Chitra has done a lot uh, for transforming um, Shakespeare studies in France uh, to, to make it something completely different uh, from what Shakespeare studies in France were uh, before uh, she undertook the, uh, the work of the Dikustenet group. And when uh, the whole generation of uh, former students have taken over, uh, and uh, we have them actually uh, by left and right, uh, and the people in charge of the Shakespeare Society of France currently uh, have quite a few uh, uh, people uh, very much marked by this uh, by the work of Shakespeare and the work of uh, uh, the Epistemic group that she, uh, that she put in place and, and led over some years. Um, we also owe Gisele a lot in terms of the uh, editorial contribution that she has made um, to, uh, to, to, the, uh, to the world of Shakespeare uh, uh, studies and the study of Shakespeare's uh, contemporaries uh, in France. Um, maybe for uh, the uh, non-French among us, I need to also say a few words about the status of the Pleiad uh, that uh, we are going to talk about more in detail with Gisele. Uh, um, in France, you know, uh, to enter into the Pleiad uh, is, is quite, quite a big achievement uh, for, an, uh, for an author. A major author is Sammy Dance. The moment uh, the work goes into these uh, famous uh, little uh, books in the uh, very um, um, recognizable uh, stick cases uh, under um, gold sign. Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, in, in terms of uh, in terms of the Pleiad editions in, in France, uh, of course, quite a few uh, major names in world literature have been uh, uh, Pleiadized, if I may say so. Uh, <laughs> the Pleiad play this with the parts of the other folio for, for Shakespeare. And, uh, and in France, even though we have uh, quite a few um, other major um, World standards uh, and uh, and Anglo Saxon uh, standards, Austin, they have not they have this show, they have etc. Uh, the Shakespeare um, initiative, uh, thanks to Gisele and um, her co editor, translator, uh, Jean Michel Deva, uh, Shakespeare got quite a, uh, quite a different special visibility thanks to, uh, to the work you guys did in 2018 did for the Shakespeare play. Um, so, um, to introduce this talk uh, very uh, very briefly, I uh, would first of all uh, like to to ask Shizhen how she uh, how she feels about uh, this new uh, standardization that Shakespeare underwent thanks to the Pleiad edition uh, and thanks to the uh, special choice that uh, Shizhen negotiated with Pleiad to have a um, a parallel uh, text, a bilingual text, which is one of the specificities. Of uh, this player, this particular player, edition. Would you like to say a word about that? She tells the starts. Well, you no, know, I'm, I'm not very good at uh, conversation because I don't know exactly what it means. <laughs> and I never, thank you, and I never converse uh, <laughs> in uh, that sort of, uh, in especially uh, in this place. So, um, uh, I, I, I'm very sorry if I don't react the, the, the right way and uh, you might be more used to it, you see, but it really it's the first time for me that uh, I even not 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 simply because I'm I'm, I'm the one who's uh, uh, about to do the conversation, but uh, I never even attended any anything of the sort. So excuse me for a, um, it's it's new ground for me, and so I'm breaking new ground and. and Quite glad in 87 to have still new ground to break, and that's it's quite, uh, it's quite uh, an experience. So, if I may, I, I had, uh, um, I had suggested a possible subject around the, the, the folio, and that was that would the folio 
B, taking the whole of the polio, would it be uh, safe, so to speak, uh, for a, a new uh, translated Shakespeare in uh, Pleiades? Originally, it was to be all French and no English at all. And of course, to me, it was an impossibility. I mean, we were about to enter the 21st century and imagine a new Shakespeare in La Pleiade without the English page. That was absolutely impossible. So we tested a certain number, either the Arden editions or Old Opinion and so on. And the prices uh, were so, well, couldn't afford it. And uh, so we decided that why not? Um, I was brave enough at the time, I had 25 years less, and uh, I was brave enough to think that we might cope with that. Uh, it was, in fact, very, very difficult. And uh, I realized how. Well, but anyway. The, yeah. My question still remains, could we have, uh, have only the folio as left page for the translation and the full edition of Pleiade? And I realized, reading, for example, this magnificent, I have my folio, the folio before, but don't say it's my folio. And uh, uh, I realized reading the introduction by um, Doug um, Austin must be his name. Sorry. Anyway, uh, the introduction is centered on precisely uh, why all folio and why this uh, folio, um, uh, this new folio edited. Uh, as a facsimile portfolio. And the, um, the, the position we have in, uh, it's, that's where memory fades me, you see, in, in names. And uh, yes, Dr. Mostyn. And um, you see, you know, his argument, his argument is that, um, uh, the folio was meant, was done by actors, meant for actors, and that in fact they were not plays. It is not literary uh, objects, but they were scripts. And that was a very fascinating argument to think that indeed they are not plays, but script for the stage with all the addition that uh, a, a uh, um, stage manager would have to add or um, I mean the sort of reshuffling of decks that you have in a, in a uh, new production. So uh, at the beginning I was fascinated by this argument that I thought well why not go all folio and uh, just, and especially with half of the plays only in folio form, anyway. So we had to think it over only for half of the, the selection. And I realized how difficult it was to take it all folio. The argument that we have in Don Austin is that uh, indeed, it was meant for the stage, they were scripts, but it's not. And um, of course, he refers us to all the, um, for example, this magnificent, wonderful text uh, at the beginning, written uh, uh, and signed by Hemmings and um, and uh, um, addressed to the great variety of readers, they were not mistaken, readers. And they knew, of course, that the book, the book would be for readers. But at the same time, they knew that 
each time a book by Shakespeare would be out, there would be some question of money in the background. And for example, the argument is, please do read it, but mostly buy it. So we realize that each time we have to choose whether between the uh, um, uh, few quartos or folio, the argument is how to sell it. And our problem was how to sell it. And indeed, for French public, French readers, who would not be specialists of English, or not always specialists of English, um, they would have to be, of course, uh, held to their choice. And so we realized that indeed we could not get them straight into the folio without any explanation, uh, without any interpretation. And we realized mostly that some plays could not be, for example, I take the Othello play. It's quite good in the uh, folio uh, form, but poetically, that is in terms of the specific poetics of the stage, what is heard, the rhythm of the lines, the rhythm of the words, the quarto, the very belated quarto, also, a posthumous car portal, uh, 1622, was much better than the folio. So would we, uh, I mean, keep to a folio for the sake of um, doing something really, very, very, well, very, I suppose, more rational, whereas, in fact, once you started comparing the different forms, well, there was no, most of the time, I realized going over all the, the different ways, uh, this the, the late days, that uh, most of the time, the quartos were much more interesting. They were just as uh, perfect for the stage, and they were even nearer. What had been done for the stage at the time of Shakespeare, because Shakespeare was alive when they were uh, printed. Some of them are very poor quartos, and we didn't, of course, select the bad quartos. But they are very good quartos, and from this point of view, it would have been foolish just for the sake of French um, sense of system, just for the old folio and, and not mixing in. Um, folios and quarters. So we decided, therefore, that it would be a French production for once. The French, uh, well, some French uh, speculators would produce a, a text that would not be, of course, I acknowledge that without all the multiple, excellent, wonderful. Uh, editions, whether from England or the States, of course, we would have been unable to do anything with the, the text. I mean, it's so difficult even to begin with to choose between two texts. For example, in the Othello uh, choice between the quarto or the uh, folio, um, um, my, I was helped in my choice by she was a colleague in Nanterre, she was English. And the set. And the set. And we would be, we started reading it a lot. And I knew that she was English, so she had the ear for it. And we decided at the end that we would opt for the, for the water. Because poetically, the very poetics of the sounds were much better than what we have in the folio, and it was very near at the same time. So, in fact, we were directed much more by the poetics of the stage, even though we didn't choose the, the um, folio in a sort of more consistent way, and we had either quarters or folios. But I realized going through the different uh, introductions or um, 
that that in fact uh, each time we had a quarto and it was a good quarto, we uh, altered the quarto. It's, it's amazing. We didn't. It, it wasn't the original uh, aim, but, but finally that's what we did. And of course, I wasn't the only one. I mean, we were a whole. Um, we are mainly in Lean did a lot in, in this, and uh, so did Jean, and uh, so uh, fortunately I was such a low. Imagine what it would have been if I had been a low producer. For me, well, sometimes I don't, I don't see the things that are obvious, so they could, they, they saw, they saw it. Exactly, so as a result, uh, we have the uh, I think among the assets of this um, this particular day edition is uh, first the very bold, cho bold choice of going bilingual. There's uh, the uh, idea that this is an edition which is as much about being read as about being possible to stage. You were thinking that the two things are yes. mixed at the same time. Because it was to accompany, well, uh, Jean Michel is very sorry not to be here, but he, is, he gets another operation of some sort today. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, it was meant to be uh, an edition for plays that had uh, translations that had been uh, on stage already. Not simply, uh, well, some of them, of course, were from some of the plays were translated for the yard because we had no translation uh, prior to it. But uh, mostly, they had been. Uh, on stage, and uh, we wanted it to be a state material, and we wanted it to be an addition for people working with the state and for the stage, and with uh, an English page that also had been meant for the page and was the best of what a script uh, could be uh, for. Um, I mean, uh, imagine a playwright who wants to stage, uh, uh, well, Othello or uh, the Henry Sip uh, that uh, Lean uh, edited in the in the in, in the first volume of the uh, Isla. And we also kept the the very uh, terminology that but we kept the terminology of the volume that is uh, histories, comedies, tragedies. Nevertheless, we chose to, to start with tragedies, and that was another question I had, whether this was a uh, requirement uh, from the, uh, the publisher or whether it was your choice to start. And we started with the tragedies because uh, in France, uh, tragedies are much better known than any other play by Shakespeare. Uh, most of the French people do not know that Shakespeare ever wrote comedies, except for the midst of a night stream. And uh, the histories are absolutely unknown to uh, French readers for some reasons, I don't know. But, and, and so uh, we had to have the tragedy first, that is, again, with uh, the uh, recommendation to the readers, read it, but mostly buy it. <laughs> and uh, for get mad, it's very, very important to get something that was the box. And, um, but they were very generous, you see, all the set, because we have eight volumes, the, the, the sonnets are the, 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 the last volume uh, with the lean and uh, uh, Marie mostly in the edition and uh, translation by Jean Michel. And, um, but of course, we, well, it's not our problem today since it wasn't in the, in the, in the volume, of course, the volume is exclusively at the stage plays. But uh, yes, so we're very generous in uh, in giving uh, each volume is over some of them in the, the history, particularly uh, almost 3,000 pages. I mean, if you've got the right eyes for it, because it's, uh, well, it takes. Uh, to well, the Bible paper, uh, uh, yes. but uh, they, they really understood that we needed um, room and space for, well, to explain what really was Shakespeare's genius, not uh, the vulgar um, word genius that is something out of the way and so on, but very practically, uh, the practicalities of genius, that is all the work on the sources. I mean, Shakespeare never invented anything, except in three plays that have no coherence, 
that is a midsummer night dream, uh, the tempest, and the um, uh, lots of uh, yeah, goblins, lots. But you get, get excited for these three plays. All the plays are very, very faithful to the text. Most of them are uh, I remember when I was very young and they can learn to all those things and reading the, the, the Merchant of Venice for the first time and, and imagining the genius to invent the um, pound of flesh. And when I had to realize that the pound of flesh has already so many uh, formulation of the sources in the Italian uh, uh, and so on. So um, we, we, we need plenty of room to explain to French people who are not of this tradition of the invention, the start of the invention, uh, I mean, what all the sources could mean. And, uh, the, and at the same time, technically, uh, that uh, the text had had different forms in the quartos, in the folio. And what we retain from the folio, because it was especially useful for French readers, you know, we have a lot of English for French readers, is that in the folio, um, the, um, the, what do you say for editions? You say editions? Oh, yeah, yeah. Good. Thank you. My, my face is all going, so sorry. And, um, but uh, this was very important for French people because it, it means the music of the line, which, of course, you wouldn't have in some of the quartos, because the quartos are printed in old spelling and so on, so it had to be modernized anyway, much more than the, the, the folio. And uh, also, the, the, you wouldn't see the enriching with uh, apostrophe and the, the D, for example, for a, a final, um, 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 so it was quite uh, quite important that we could explain this and even explain uh, all the coherence of the uh, of the edition, how we proceeded, why we did this, and uh, so on. Uh, I must say that, uh, it, well, Gemma was really, they were really very, very generous for us. In, well, even the generous for Gemma as well. I think you were uh, uh, very selective. They have produced the uh, wonderful showcase uh, for uh, French research in terms of uh, editorial practices and editorial studies. So, well, well done. <laughs> uh, I was wondering uh, if there were, uh, I mean, I might. You're inviting your ask for she before I finish. Oh, sorry. Because the danger is that uh, if you don't interrupt me, I'll never interrupt. So, that's one of the generous nature. Uh, uh, so let's share it. Let's share your, your, your knowledge with the, with the rest of the, of the room if they have questions. Um, uh, otherwise, I won't take too uh, too much of this conversation time just by myself asking questions. Uh, any question from the floor? Think that, think that. Otherwise, I will ask a question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I was uh, wondering if you had something to say about the uh, uh, the uh, handling of a uh, of a Gagnon volume as a as a text that can potentially uh, go into the world of theatrical practice and staging. I mean, this is something that you would not do in the same way with the folio formats and with the, with the Gallimard uh, formats. Uh, how, uh, since, uh, since well, you want to speak about it on the, uh, on the Gallimard format English page, mm -hmm. I mean, the, 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 the French translation mm -hmm. uh, is, is likely to change, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the third translation of Shakespeare in the Yard. In, uh, in 50 years. So it, it's likely to change again because uh, styles and approaches to translation and all that, of course, uh, it will change. But uh, I doubt, um, I, I mean, um, scientific uh, attitude towards the English text could, could move away a lot 
from what we did. Because we explained every, uh, well, there are words that are absolutely uninterpretable in, in the, in, in the, either in the folio or in the poetry and sometimes in both. And uh, you have to opt for something. You cannot produce a text for modern readers telling them, well, have a guess and, uh, and, 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 and do, but well, do your bit to, 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 to make sense of the, of the line. It has to make sense. So we had sometimes, but most of the time we relied on the wonderful English editions, the editors of the 18th century, Rowe, uh, uh, and so on. Absolutely wonderful. The, what, they, what they suggested, what they produced, what they tried to understand in the text, it's, it's something, I mean, we would not have been able to do anything without the uh, English editions, and especially the historical, the, as we call the historical edition, the editions of the 18th century, but of course, even in later, in later uh, periods, we, I mean, I, I wouldn't even have started without uh, my practice uh, of the Arden editions and all that, I mean, Arden or UP and, uh, yes. Um, I remember panel to, uh, to the Bayat, uh, big Bayat editions. Uh, I remember you uh, undertook a number of uh, standalone Yanima uh, volumes. I remember in particular your King Lear, and I wanted to bring your King Lear in particular, and I wondered if you wanted to say a, a word about the status of those standalone volumes compared to the collected um, Bayat uh, version. When you're thinking of the two formats, oh, different and then the same. Anyway, well, that's again what I was mentioning. It's a and uh, uh, very generous uh, had to complete a, a, a study of um, King Clear. He had no time for it because he was a uh, president of our university and all that. And he said, are you interested? And of course, instantly, I was interested. Um, and uh, and that was it. But for example, it was all French. There was no, no English in it. And even there, I, I, well, I suggested that we could not possibly have Shakespeare in France now with more people than before knowing English, um, not to perfection, but knowing English and uh, having the, the possibility to, to read the, the English text with some help and plenty of notes. I mean, we, we did it in the style of what uh, uh, the most magnificent English editions are. I mean, I had models for patterns, and it, it was wonderful to to work in the same direction with plenty of notes for the text and uh, plenty of notes and notes also to explain what we did to the text. I mean, with a very, very accurate dimensions of uh, uh, one word that became another word because it was reachable and, and so on, for example. So, we, yes, that's what uh, was the interest of it that we had. I mean, we could do whatever was useful scientifically to make the the the, the edition really. Um, only the translation has a point the same permanence because uh, the translation necessarily belongs to one moment and will be replaced sometime by another. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't feel it goes that the piece translation has to be replaced, not at all. But I mean, uh, necessarily it will happen so far. So uh, I think we have a question here from Anali. Yes, I just wanted to say that I think it is remarkable that the fact that you really worked at establishing the text in a way that you've never been done before in France. 
So you, you worked at establishing the Shakespeare English text in a way it had never been done before in France, and this is remarkable. And I think that you're right, this will probably, the Gaïba will keep your establishment for much longer, possibly, than they will keep translation, because it's really costly to establish a text, so um, they owe you a lot. Um, so I was just wondering if you could uh, perhaps give us a few, well, uh, yes, my question was a very general one. Would you have established a text differently had you been working for uh, a British um, <laughs> publisher? Um, do you feel that you established, apart from the divisions, are there ways that you would have established? Well, that we forgot all the previous edition to start with. I mean, because with, with, with even all the all the veneration up for uh, the other editions and all this and all that, sometimes, and especially in recent, um, more recent uh, periods in the, in the 90s, and uh, when we decided to do this uh, um, uh, bilingual edition, uh, uh, they tended to go into fanciful edition of this and this and that, or uh, for example, the OUB um, published in 15, in, uh, 1988, they published two figures, suddenly, because they were to be two figures. Well, they are not two figures, they are two versions, or they are two different approaches, but they are not two figures, or two special. Editions, for example. So realizing this, you see, uh, helped us to really come. Really, we went um, to ground zero. Really, starting from uh, it's the moment when I bought this facsimile uh, uh, because it was easier to have it at home than uh, to have the, the, the well, my connections always. Uh, Awful, but now of course you have all connections, you have all the photos, and Henri Siami very kindly gave me some of his photos. He had a collection of photos and gave them to me, printed photos, accidental photos. And so we started really from, from reading very carefully each photo, each folio, uh, a play before deciding whether that would be photo or folio, and before deciding what to do. Especially in terms of uh, uh, simplification of the spending and all that. And you remember that we were so happy to discover in the sonnets that, oh, it was so clear. It's magnificent in the sonnets. I mean, we had so little to do uh, in terms of re real edition, but of course, it's very different in the bottles and in the, in the, in the folios. That's where we realized that there were two separate forms of writing, writing for uh, very elaborate and uh, accepted literary form with a sonnet, and it was so careful with a not one mistake, or no some plan for several. Um, uh, sonnet, and of course, it's very different when we come to the plays because the plays, what we have from the play, we have no manuscript to, to start with. So, is this the argument, for example, of Don Austin that uh, he, the, the, that um, Hemings and um, oh, no, no. yes, uh, started from, sorry, uh, started from uh, the um, from the manuscripts. That they had in the theater because they were also directing the theater, managers of the theater, and so on. And they didn't want them to uh, be lost or to be um, uh, stolen and uh, and published without uh, authorization from the from the the, the company. And so, uh, but at the same time, well, we have. No, the manuscript. And there is no reason to start dreaming that the manuscript for the folio could be any better than the manuscript that went into the photos. I mean, we have no traces whatever of uh, what could help uh, choosing in between a uh, portrayal. Uh, in my conversation, so, yeah, actually, yes, uh, the conversation being conversation that you have time for one last question. I have two hands raised. So if you guys don't mind, you have to, yeah. Uh, okay, maybe you. Uh, and I think you are asking this. Uh, 
um, I, uh, yeah, I, I wanted to thank you because uh, I think one of the aims of the Fayad is to be part of a familial collection. Uh, for me, it exists with my mom, who actually owns the, uh, the examples of me. <laughs> Uh, and I think uh, there are a lot of ways to read the text uh, to uh, adapt to, uh, to a very different sensibilities. So I think uh, something that really resonates with me is the, the way it rolls up the time uh, to be on stage and to hear it. And even just while reading it here, you really have a sense of the tact tactile nature of uh, Shakespeare and the translations, which are, I think, really excellent. Like the, the scope of the translation just adapts to any reading, be it uh, pay, uh, to, to see the text uh, comparatively, uh, the, the English and the French version, or just to read the French quality of the, the literature. I think uh, this layout is one of the best examples of English uh, culture brought to France and uh, actually taken by French. Well, to me, it's not the only culture to bring to France, you see. For example, I'm, I'm, I feel um, nearer and cleaner for uh, Virginia Woolf than I ever, ever read for Shakespeare, because that's, that's it, you see. I mean, uh, Virginia Woolf is still someone I've lived with and she was someone I could never, I mean, it's so remote, it's so, uh, and it has been sort of, um, so, so, so many things and writings have interposed between Shakespeare, original writing, and my own reading. I mean, we have no, no such effect with that someone like Virginia Woolf is like Austin and so on. I mean, it belongs to our, our culture and we have no effort to do no special effort to do to to to, to read it, but for Shakespeare, I mean, reading Shakespeare without help, I, mean, I can't dream it. It's it possible. I mean, I couldn't. I, anyway, I couldn't. Okay, that's why it's worth. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so, uh, now, yes, it went quite. Uh, so, quite 